The Apple Vision Pro is here, and one of the things it can do is be used as a giant virtual monitor for your Mac. Let's run Photoshop and edit a couple photos. All right, so let's put on the headset and dive in. Let me take off my glasses here. The prescription lenses inside the Vision Pro will take care of that. Um, if you want more about my misadventures on trying to get those prescription lenses, feel free to hit the video I'm gonna drop up here uh, and you can read all about that. All right, so I am now putting these on. I'm gonna tighten up the fit here so I'm in the right place. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make that connection to my Macintosh now to use this as a virtual display. There's a couple different ways you can do that. You can look at your Mac or you can use Control Center like I just did. So, so we are now seeing the Vision Pro. We've got Photoshop up here. I'm gonna move my Ecamm window out of the way. But what you're looking at is this giant virtual desktop in front of me. Now, this is my Macintosh desktop. And one of the things I do know with the screen recordings through the Vision Pro is that things are going to look a little jiggly for you. They don't for me. I don't notice micro movements when my face moves as I talk, for example. But you certainly will in this video. So I can make this desktop smaller if I wanted. I could make it bigger. I can adjust how much of the outside world I have come in, but I've now got a screen that is much bigger than the physical screen that's in front of me behind it. So this is awesome. I have a much bigger interface to edit photos. And I can now edit those photos using all the normal Photoshop tools, which, you know, I mistakenly clicked there, but if I wanted to, uh, you know, if I wanted to uh, crop, you know, I can hit the crop tool. I can crop down from the top, say I want to get rid of some of this stuff that's not real exciting up there. I can crop in from this right side because I don't necessarily want those other folks in this photo. You know, I hit enter, it applies the crop, piece of cake. Now, I'm using my Apple trackpad to do these edits. I used my keyboard as well. You'll notice it's not even an Apple keyboard. It's my Microsoft natural keyboard that needs to be cleaned. It's whatever you have plugged into your Mac, this is just a virtual display. There's nothing special for using it with Vision OS. So I'm gonna go over to another image. Uh, on this one, you know, let's say I you know, want to uh, transform it. So I'm gonna unlock the background layer, which I often forget to do. Go into my transform tool. I wanna rotate it because I, I don't like how I captured it crooked because hey, you know, maybe I need to become a better photographer then I can adjust these crops, um, you know, where I want them kind of for, you know, for my artistic effect versus just constraining the crop to, uh, to the, the section I, I left behind. So we're going to say that looks a lot better. Now I use the keyboard. I use the mouse. I also have a Wacom tablet over here. I can use my Wacom tablet. And so let's say I wanted to do some retouching. Now, Sam doesn't really need skin retouching in this photo, but, you know, Sam's a pet person, and I see we've got a few hairs on her hoodie here. So, you know, I could hit the J key to grab my healing brush tool, um, you know, and then come over here using my Wacom tablet, select a uh, sampling point, and I could, you know, remove some of these pet hairs from Sam's sweatshirt. So that's using a Wacom tablet with the Apple Vision Pro. It's really just a big display for your Mac. Now, the big caveat here is that I'm using a Wacom tablet, I'm using my trackpad, I'm using my keyboard to interface with the Vision Pro. There's some other issues as well. Let's talk about that. I'm gonna stop the Vision Pro recording and then uh, We'll talk about that face to face. All right, so this big monitor could be fantastic when traveling. If I need to do some photo editing at a large size and uh, I don't uh, wanna take my big monitor with me, that Vision Pro can act as a giant monitor wherever I'm at. Now, it's not perfect, there are some caveats. Uh, I'm gonna hit those in just a moment. But if this is the kind of thing that you dig, 
you know, make sure that you get onto my email list. It's techphotoguy.com. There's a subscription right on the homepage. I'll put a link down below as well. But my email subscribers are the first to find out about these latest things with the tech photo world. So I said there were some caveats. A couple of caveats to know is that, you know, as you saw, I was seeing the Mac desktop and I was interacting with my keyboard, with my trackpad, with my Wacom tablet. I was not using the Vision OS interface to interact with Photoshop, right? So while I'm running it as a Vision OS virtual monitor, I'm still using the Mac version of Photoshop. I'm not able to use my eyes to select things and edit, which I think would be an interesting future possibility. And I assume Adobe is looking at that for sure. I know this is on their radar. The other thing that you'll see or that you did see is that I it moved my whole desktop there. It treats it as one single desktop display. You can't have multiple displays of your Mac in Vision OS at this point. Now, there's some experimental code, very alpha that somebody has shared on GitHub. I'll drop a link below that'll let you cast a single window to Vision OS. Um, so that's getting closer to, I think, what we would like to see. Because one of the things I would like to see with Photoshop, with all of those palettes that Photoshop has, is to be able to float those in different places in the virtual environment. Right now I can't do that because it really is just one Mac display. Another thing that you should know is that the color is a little off. Color in Vision OS is not necessarily 100% lifelike. Now, I'm doing some technical experiments with white balance, and I'm going to make a video about those, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you get notified when that happens, um, because that's something interesting I want to keep playing around with. Uh, obviously, as photographers, if the color is a little bit off, that's going to affect how we edit. Stay tuned. Minor little thing, but when I go back to my Mac after having used the virtual display, all of my applications end up on the MacBook screen. My second monitor that maybe had Photoshop originally, just like it did today, does not have Photoshop anymore. Photoshop has moved over to my primary monitor. It'd be neat if it remembered those things, but hey, this is version 1.0, and that's definitely a bit of a nitpicky detail. So... I'm excited about all this. I would love to have you subscribe to this channel so you can see more Vision OS videos coming soon. I've got that white balance experiment in the works. I'm gonna do another video very soon about running Lightroom in Vision OS. So this is not as a virtual display for your Mac, but running Lightroom, the app, inside Vision OS because that can happen right now. I'm gonna get that up there on YouTube soon. So like this video, subscribe. As I said, hop on my email list. It's the best way to keep up with what's going on right now. Things are evolving rapidly. Welcome along to the ride. And until we chat again, take care.